Get ready to ignite your real estate business with the Launch Your Farm podcast. Our episodes are packed with inspiration, success stories, and expert strategies that will help you dominate your geographic farm. So tune in and enjoy. Right. I can tell you that by the end of the listings that are going out every three days, and um, at least for a buyer, and my, my nurturing campaign, they're getting hit 285 times, about 285 times a year. Wow. Welcome back to another episode of the Launcher Farm Show. I'm your host, Ryan Smith, and today we've got a great guest. It's Patty Sampson. She is a CRM specialist and a drip campaign specialist. I am super excited to dive in and get some knowledge from her because there's some really good nuggets that we're going to take out today. So, Patty, take a second. Tell us a bit about yourself and why you're here. Well, thanks, Ryan, for having me. I really appreciate it. Uh, well, yes, I'm Patty Sampson. Uh, I started out in this business as a real estate agent, and I still am a real estate broker here in Scottsdale, Arizona. I've uh, been doing this for almost 20 years now and worked mostly my business was internet based. And so as a result, I had to get good at prospecting and, and basically managing my database. So um, I, I say I'm the self-proclaimed drip campaign queen <laughs> because I was obsessed with automation and how to make it look like I really meant to send it, <laughs> you know what I mean? Instead yep. of it looking canned and uh and obsessed with getting a response. And of course, as a result, turning those into sales. So, you know, I started right off the bat and sold 42 homes my first year in real estate. And from there, here's I, here I am today, an author of a book. I got, I just rolled out my new book, Drip Campaign Secrets on Amazon, top seller. I was excited about that. Uh, so that's kind of, that's kind of the long and the short of it. And today my goal is to help real estate agents all over the world to get better at their follow-up because there's no <laughs> money in lead generation, right? It's yeah. all in the follow-up yeah. in our I, business, yeah, for absolutely. sure. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot I want to unpack today because I think there's some real information that agents need to understand because a lot of agents do struggle with this. I I would I wouldn't say I was the self-professed king of follow-up and, and email campaigns, but uh, when I got started, that was something I dived, dove into. I was internet-based as well, and I really learned it, and I saw the need for it because a lot of agents just struggle. And I would say most agents struggle with really knowing what to do, how to do it, why to do it, how often do you do it, and there's just so much mystery around it, and there's a lot of myths around it. There's a lot of misinformation. There's a lot of just terrible practices, which I'm sure, sure you've seen. Oh, well, that's why a I lot have a of, business today. That's, sure. that's exactly. <laughs> and there's a lot of great opportunities. So I want to dive into some of that today. But before we do, I always, I always like to start with kind of who you are and where you came from. So you mentioned you've been an agent for about 20 years. So tell us about what got you into real estate and, and what got you into internet leads? Because I think that's, well, that's, a, that's, that's a great question. It's part of what I talk about in the book, because I wouldn't be here today had it not been for what I did before I got into this business. And um, I, I went to school, college here at ASU to the party school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> to, uh, but I did learn while I was here um, how to uh, become, I was a paralegal basically for 17 years before I got into real estate. But this was during, and I'm really telling my age here, but it was during the eight, you know, 80s, early 90s. And, you know, we didn't have computers like we had. I, I had a word processor when I first started in the early 80s, you know, and I didn't even have that. I had an electric typewriter that I could literally put in a macro. And if you're as old as me, you know what those are there. You, you <laughs> put one code into this electric typewriter and I could type 45 characters exactly the same over and over again, which <laughs> was amazing when you're typing up legal documents, right? So you're not in the having to get the paper and, you know, you know, that, uh, you know, what's that, that carbon paper and having to correct it. it was just a disaster. Anyway, so I started automating as much as I could. And then the word processors came in. And, and when I realized I could not sit behind a cubicle anymore doing this right to left, I had already automated the entire office with what I could do back in those mm -hmm. days. And that was basically merge, merging two documents together where I had one with the information and the other one with the form. And so it was pre-word, pre I think. And uh, But anyway, I figured out how to do that. And um, I would take my little floppy disk from desk to desk. Well, when I got into real estate, it was the first 
the first, well, I was at one brokerage, but right, it didn't really pan out there for the first few months I was there. And I ended up working for a company which will remain nameless now because they've since been sued. But <laughs> I worked for a company that provided us like 100 to 150, 200 leads a month and wow. online internet leads. And this was prior to Zillow-ish, you know. And they had a proprietary CRM, which I didn't have any clue what that was back then. And then we're talking 80, let's see, what year was that? No, I got my license in 2004. So um, anyway, what we had to do was work these leads. And if we didn't work them, which is basically wanted us to touch these leads physically, electronically every single month, when you got 5,000 leads in your database, that's impossible to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so I figured out a way to automate it. And, um, and I, had a, I had a process of, you know, I, I automated the best I could back then because they didn't have texting that was automated. You know, we did have like automated drip, drip mail, but they didn't really want us using it. But I figured out a way to get around it. Yes. And what I did was I put a code in every time I, you know, I'd give myself a number for which email they got. And eventually when CRMs actually did come into play, the customer relationship management software, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, we were able to automate all of that. And, and I just got so good at it. And the whole goal really was, to get these people to open my mail, it, it did literally become a game to me. How many responses could I get? Yeah. And I could track that, right? I could yeah. see who was opening, who was clicking. And luckily the software did do that. So when that, when that came into play, it changed my business. It absolutely did. I mean, I sold 42 homes doing it manually slash automated, but it was still a lot of work to follow up and making sure that we're not losing track of where these people are in the process. Right. So. Yeah. It, and you mentioned it, it is a game changer and a lot of agents never see that light of that because they never jump in and they're afraid of it. And I know my experience. So I've been 15 years in the business. I started on a team. We were internet based and we had a lot of leads and I would put them into an Excel sheet and I had an Excel sheet and I had a little, little binder and I'd write my leads down. I'd print them off and I had them sitting there. And then it wasn't until I really actually jumped into using a CRM system that it completely changed my business because, and I remember the day I was, I was out and I had a client call and they wanted some information and I had their information at the office in a binder. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Like I, I don't have yeah, access to the information. So I have to be where that is. And I started looking to some CRM systems and I started looking at ones with mail merge. So I was able to mail merge yeah. and it just completely changed my mind. And then, like you said, I got obsessed with getting better at it. And I started going, how do I get better emails? How do I write the change the subject lines? And I went from, I think it was like 18% open rate. And over a few months, I started tracking, looking at the best emails. I read everything I could. And then I was up to like 42% open rate because I was just became, it became a game for me oh, and it absolutely. completely changed how I did my business. So I think for a lot of agents, if they're, I want to dive into how to get started in that first, and then we'll go into some of the more important things because there, I think there's a lot of agents who are kind of sitting on the sidelines probably going, yeah, I, I should, or I know I need to, or, but they don't know how to take that next step or that first step. Right. So how, well, how do you, I, I want to, I want to address your comment about the Excel spreadsheet, because I personally never use an Excel spreadsheet, partly because I never use learned initially how to use Excel, <laughs> but I, I, it just floors me because I talk to agents every day of the week and how many of them tell me I'm selling 20 million and I'm using an Excel spreadsheet yeah. and it surprises the hell out of me. And I think <laughs> to myself, if we could get you into a CRM, how much more you could do, yeah. you'd have a team, you'd be like running nuts, you know? Yeah. So how, how do you get into it? Well, first of all, you know, that question about, which I see all the time in social media, which drives me batty just batty is what is the best CRM out there, right? <laughs> yeah. And so it it's an ongoing pun. Batty. It's a joke now because everyone asks it's so such much. a joke. Well, yeah. and I and I don't mean it in a bad way. First of all, let me just say I'm glad you're inquiring. I'm glad you're asking. I, I honestly think that you know you got to start somewhere yeah. if that's where you feel like you need to start. But the problem with that is is that your business is totally different than my business. Mm -hmm. Like I know for sure you you're doing your geographic farming. I have never done my business like that, and and I think that's amazing. I would I would I, but it. I, I don't I couldn't tell you what would be the best CRM for your geographic farming necessarily. I could tell you the things you need to be watching for. Yep. 
So if I'm doing strictly internet business, I got to be sure that that CRM can integrate with my lead sources. And sure, you probably have electronic ways for people to get into your software because you're using, uh, you know, QR codes or landing pages and that kind of thing, which you really need to be doing. But I think the big key first is to sit down and figure out the things that you are struggling with. What's keeping you up at night? What what is that? You know you need to be on, you know you need the software, but you don't know exactly what it is you need it to do, partly because you don't know what it needs. So I want you to sit down and figure out what are those things that you really want to make sure that you're not worrying about at night when you go to bed, because those are the things you need to go look for in a CRM that can help you. And most likely the CRM, there is a CRM that can help you with it. So instead of asking your neighbor agent who's sitting at the desk desk next to you, which one is the best? Sure, ask. But what I want you to ask is, what is it doing for you that you love instead of what's the best? Because what's best for Joe isn't going to be the same for me, right? right? So find out what that is that you really want it to do. And and maybe if you don't know, you need to get up, well, first get my book because I have a whole list of all the things your CRM could do. Plus, there's probably a ton more that I don't know about. Um, but at least get started somewhere. And then once you get that, now our whole goal is how are you going to get those leads into your CRM? And so that's the whole other discussion because it's dependent yeah. t- totally upon the kind of leads you're getting, right? Yeah, if you're right. getting them online, like many of us are. Exactly. Integration yeah. is going to be absolutely key. And that is automating the lead into the software. So you're <laughs> not manually doing it because otherwise you won't use your CRM. You just exactly. won't use it. Exactly. I agree. You know. I- and the analogy I always use when it comes to CRM systems is like, it's like buying a vehicle and mm-hmm. saying, what's the best car? Well, do you have a family? Are you using it for work? Are you, do you have a bunch of kids? Do you have, is it solo? Or do you care about gas? Do you care about fuel economy? Do you care about safety? Do you care about how much it costs? Correct. So I think for a lot of agents, when they ask that question, it's like saying, what's the best yeah. car? Well, it's going to be, what's the best fit? So right. let's say they get over that hurdle they, and they figure out the right, the, the right CRM system. And they, they figure out what's right. going on where I find a lot of agents now get stuck and correct me if I'm wrong or if you think if you agree well, with I me. won't correct you I'm sure okay. it's right <laughs> all kinds of issues we're all you know <laughs> agents get in they get their CRM they get things set up they put their leads in there if they even know how to do that they log on and then they go now what and they it's don't actually right. leverage it they don't use it and they go I've got a CRM they, 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 oh, they tell people I've got a CRM and they don't know what to do with it what yeah. would you say are those next steps for agents getting started going okay I've got a system I, now what? I know how to use it or not. What, what's the best way to get started using it? Right. Okay. So you get, you get your lead. Your goal is to get them in automatically, but if you're just getting started and you're going to load up your database, my first suggestion is not to go and get a list of, you know, from every open house you ever sat and then open up your CRM and start adding it manually. You do not want to do that. You want to learn how that tool will help you import through an Excel spreadsheet. Now, Excel is not that hard. It's basically a table. And if you go to Google and if you if you can't or go find me because I somewhere I've I, I provide these services too. But your goal really is, is to get them into a table first and then you want to make sure that your table is telling you two really, really important things because without knowing each about this thing about each one of these leads, there's no way for you to start communicating with them. Okay. So the first thing is what's the con what is that contact type? And when I say that, I mean what kind of human are they? Are they a buyer? Are they a seller? Usually they're one or the other. Now, if you're doing other kind of business, property dam property uh, man property damage, yeah. Uh, <laughs> property Similar. management or, you know, um, you know, rental leads, because I've done my share of those, make sure that it's clear in one column, right, what it is. The other column is going to be what's their status. So where are they in the sales pipeline? Are they brand new lead you've never spoke to? Are they somebody that you are working with that who hasn't quite told you they're ready to do something? Um, or they're closed, or maybe they're just somebody in your world that you know, right? Yeah. That you want to just let them know you're an agent, but they're not actually reaching out to you yet. So I kind of equate that with maybe your church group or your singing group, like I sing. Uh, those people that actually, you know, you have email co- and phone numbers for, but you want to just maybe send them holiday things or, or yeah. a sphere or something monthly or your yeah. newsletter. So once you have those two things yep. down, which are the two most important things, I don't care where these leads came from necessarily. <laughs> it's good to know from the beginning, but right now, while you're trying to get yourself up and running, when you know those two things, you can put the people in buckets. Yeah. 
And so those buckets then are going to be, oh, these people need a buyer campaign. These people need a, you know, a nurturing seller campaign. These are my close clients. They need to be getting something to stay in touch with them or whatever. So once you know where they're at in that, in the contact type and, and uh, status, now you can start communicating with them. So the whole goal, you guys, is to be able to communicate with them with something they care about. And unless you know, this is why it's so important in the beginning when you're getting leads to get them into the system, because unless you know where these came from, it's hard to really zero in Mm. how you can communicate with them. So we can have that whole discussion here in a minute. But my goal for you is to get something running so that it does two things. One, obviously, it keeps you in front of them so that they don't forget about you. Yep. But two, it actually, when they're hitting on your stuff, which is opening and clicking, and if it's connected to a a website, you can see their search results. You can see when they're logging in. My old old system used to tell me when they were printing driving directions, which was amazing. (laughs) I haven't been in a CRM. My new CRM, when I'm going to roll out, is going to do that. But um, so our goal right now is to make sure that you not only are staying in front of them, but that they're... the the interaction with what you're sending is actually helping you identify the hottest, warmest business in your database. So you're not just staring at a list every day when you come in. These are people that are going to be interested. And our goal is to figure out who are the hottest people. So I'm spending time with them Yep. Not trying to go down the list alphabetically every day when I come in here. <laughs> exactly. and people at, at Z never get communicated yeah. with because I'm too busy. Yeah. You know. So you and want the- to be able to see, I want to work with the people that are hottest in here. And so how do you figure that out? Right. It's managing yep. mining that database. It's not just for sending out stuff, right? Yeah. So you want to turn a drip. Oh, look at your pup back there. <laughs> turn a drip campaign on to do that. So we can talk about what those look like. <laughs> yeah. I th- and I think like you said, it, it's segmenting is so important because it's a step that a lot of agents skip and they don't understand the significance of that. And that is the difference between if, if I looked at two agents, CRM systems, and I saw one was segmented and one was not, I can tell you who's going to be more successful just oh. from that alone, because like you said, a lot of people will send blanket stuff if they don't have it segmented. They'll send right. a newsletter to everybody. They'll send the same information to everybody. And what matters to a first-time buyer family is not the same thing that matters exactly. to an investor selling his property and he owns 20 properties. So you, right. you have to segment it. And I find that that is where, again, a lot of agents get hung up on and they get stuck in that segmenting. And, they're, and I've talked to agents, they're like, oh, it takes too much time. I don't have time for that. It's There's a lot of work. I... The oh. reality is that's the work up front. And once it's done, it that's will right. speed it things up drastically. Right. And but it but it takes work. And I think that there's an opportunity because most agents aren't willing to do that. Most agents haven't figured out how important that is. You have an opportunity to really create great content. And I, I right. share the story all the time. My my friend is one of the first guests on my show, and he talks about how he segments his list and he segments it even further than most people. And he has it down to interests and things that they like. So when he talks to them and right. he's doing an intake and he finds out what kind of things they're into. So if they're into beer, he'll check off their beer. So when he sees an article or a story, or if there's something interesting that's going on, if there's an event going on, he can segment his list and say, show me all the people who are into beer or all the people that are into dogs or whatever. And then you can now really tailor what you're sending. Dude. I mean, there's just nothing more, more important than doing that because I think what, what happens to most of us We'll dump all of our stuff into that CRM because Joe told us to go over there. And then we went in, go in there and we're using the standard drip campaigns. You know how many people, agents that call me and say, oh my God, I had to turn my campaigns off (laughs) because uh, my, my Facebook ad guy turned on my campaign, just dumped it straight into this. And it doesn't make any sense at all. Or my ad said I was going to offer a first time home buyer guide and they never got it. I'm like, well, why was that? And I'll say, well, what was, what did your ad say? I don't know. You don't know what your (laughs) ad said. Why don't you know? Well, I don't know. That guy just set it up for me. I'm like, okay, so there's problem number one. (laughs) How can you really zero in what you're going to offer and keep these people interested if you're not even starting out the shoot sending what you promised you were going to send? So the great thing about that is you get your drip campaign that is so strong, your buyer campaign and your seller campaign, how easy it is to take that. In most CRMs, you can clone the entire thing. And then at the beginning, 
send them, set it up so you can send them what they signed up to get. So you're going to have different campaigns for each one of those lead sources that you have. Yeah. And you're and you're referencing that because they're wondering how the hell you got their name because they accidentally hit something <laughs> that happens a lot online. Well, I don't even know how you got my information, you know, so they're going to say that because you're not sending them what they care about for one. Yeah. And they're going to try to find an excuse to get out of that communication with you because you you've already lost them right out of the chute. Right. So, so I want to get really solid campaigns and you can work from those templates that you have. Right. So that's, that's exactly. And I was going to dive into that. I want to go into that next, yeah. but I want to ask you a question about importing content contacts too, because I find there's yeah. two different ways that people will do it. And mm -hmm. I'm, I believe in both. It just, you have to be prepared depending on how much list you have. There's the model of, I've got this massive list. I got a thousand people. I'm going to just take it, throw it in there and then I put love, them on the I drip and then going. hit send. I and I, in my experience, you then have a thousand people. And then in a week from now, it says to call them. You got a thousand people to call and it sends a thousand emails. That's one way of doing it, which can work if you have a smaller list. If you have a large list, it's very hard. Or yeah. I've seen the other ways, which is slowly drip them into your campaign and say, hey, I'm going to take five, 10 people per day, go through it, import it. Which camp are you in? Or, or well, I, I am in the, I'm in your second camp, but even more specific. Okay, so here's the thing. This happens all the time where, Oh, I'm leaving that CRM. I could go on and name names, but I'm not going to, I'm going to leave that CRM. And I, I just exported 10,000 leads out and I'm trying to get them all into my other CRM. What's the best way for me to do that? And I go, well, problem number one is you exported them all out exactly the same. So just like you bucketize when you bring them, when you, when you're, when you're trying to communicate, yeah. you really want to bucketize when you're exporting. Okay. Yeah. So if you're in a process of changing drip or CRMs, if you've done any tracking at all, and you probably got 40,000 tags, unfortunately, <laughs> because you don't want to put everyone into it, the same tags, but it's kind of a mess, but what are you going to do? You're going to Try to figure out in my book, normally when you're really trying to soup up and figure out who am I going to communicate first when I get into my new CRM, I'm going to export out. Honestly, my oldest, well, buyers, buyer leads that are less than two years old. Now, if I can track that because I did a good job in that previous CRM, I'm going to pull them all out with the similar contact type and status. You know yeah. why? Because now, not only that, they're going to be the hottest, lowest hanging fruit, most likely. Someone might say, well, why not bring in all your old clients first? Well, you could do that, but they, if they're not quite ready to do anything, all you can do right now is ask for referrals and not, right. not only, which you should do, but right now is probably not, not the priority. time. Let's yeah. see these old leads that you have less than two years old they're probably more apt to do something because they started their research already. And now they're so far down the line and they haven't heard from you. So what are you going to do? So we're going to track, we're going to start with that group and ideally start with, I say 10 to, or I say about 50 because you're already overwhelmed as you're coming yeah. into your new CRM. Yeah. You don't need to be learning it with 10,000 leads. Okay. So let's learn it with 50 of your lowest hanging, hottest fruit and bring them in. And then we're going to turn on a re-engagement campaign. And I can tell you exactly what you need to be saying to them to get them to respond. So you can get at least 60% response rate from these people in the first 24 hours. And, and you need to just find out if they're still alive, you yeah. know, and, and then you need to be sending them listings if that's what they want, plus uh, your, you know, your nurturing campaign. So I suggest that you don't do that first choice. Yes. Especially if it's significant. I mean, if it's over a couple of hundred, you really need to try to, to trim it down. Right. I also get, well, I've had never gotten any response. These leads are dead. I think I'm just going to get rid of them. And I say, don't do that. Yeah. I'll take them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I was in your air, I'll take them even if I'm over here yeah. because you, these people are dead for a reason, but that's, it's probably not because they're done looking. It's because you've lost track of them and they lost track of you. Yeah. Yeah. So let's find out if they're still alive and, and still interested. And then when they tell you yes or no, unless they tell you to stop communicating with me, you can put them on some sort of campaign that will stay in front of them until they're ready. If yeah. they're not ready yeah. or, you know, wherever they're at in that process, even if they already bought, if they, unless they said, stop, yeah. you can put them on something to keep, stay in front of them. Right. Exactly. So yeah, I say if it, till they buy, die or tell you to F off. 
Right, right. I well, my when do you know a lead is dead? When they tell you to stop or they're dead, right? Exactly. That's, yeah. Or they opt they have opt out on their own. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But even that, I mean, to be honest with you, could you do ret- I could go on for hours about this. <laughs> yeah. Their email, you could do retargeting campaigns if yeah. they've already subscribed to your YouTube channel. I mean, there's so so much you can do to stay in front of them that's not via email, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I, get I don't want to go off too far on that because I think that yeah. might confuse people. That's so a whole other discussion. It's, it's, we could have you back on to discuss that because yeah. there's a ton of great stuff there. But I want to talk about automation because you mentioned at the beginning how important that is. And I think yeah. I think that is the the magic of why a CRM system works so well. Right. And I think it's the secret sauce for really being efficient and being able to pull out big numbers because I used to have a, a gentleman I worked with, I won't say his name, when I first got started, he was a little bit of a savant. He had all of his leads in a little book like this and he had everything in there and his whole entire life was in there. And yeah. we'd said to him, like, like, like if you lose that, your life's mm-hmm. over. Oh, no, no, I never leaves my side. And he lost it. And, ah. and he, but he had to manually go through everything. And with with the CRM system that's automated, you can like you said, sleep well at night, knowing that yeah. things are being taken care of. You can focus on the things that are important. You can worry about what you, the most important people, the most important follow-ups and not worry about it. So let's talk about the kind of the basics of automation and what agents can do. And then we'll maybe we'll dive into some more advanced Great. stuff that, that they can. Perfect. Can so I think obviously, like I said, initially, depending on where your leads are coming from, but in my book, to be honest with you, the majority of this 99.9% of this can be automated to get your leads into the CRM, because obviously if you're paying for leads and you're, it's fast, right? What do they say? 66% of people will work at the agent who responds first. Now that doesn't mean they haven't already signed up somewhere else, right. but you want to be there. If they're, if they're signing up somewhere on Zillow, I hate to say it, or wherever it is that you're buying your leads from, they signed up to get something from, from you or from somebody, right? And if you're paying for that, whether it be a Facebook ad or a Google pay-per-click, whatever, they're waiting, you know? So you have to assume they're waiting. So that's like the first thing we need to get that automated so that it's happening at all hours of the night, right? Yeah, I get the, oh, I shouldn't text at three in the morning. I say text at three in the morning because they signed up at three in the morning. So yeah. don't worry <laughs> about it. They know it's automated, but you need to send what they asked for yeah. and they won't care, right? So If you had ever had, I never get anyone complaining, why'd you text me at three in the morning? Never, ever. Because first of all, I'm sending what they asked for and it's helpful information. Okay. So that said, you could also automate your stuff so that your everything subsequent to that goes out at a time that makes sense because you've preset your system to drip out emails and texts that are helpful that are, that are instilling trust that not every email is going to say, how's it going? How's it going? Do you need me? Do you need me? You need to educate. All right. So our goal is to automate throughout the way. And it's not 10 days only of pain. You guys, it (laughs) is more than that. 10 days of pain. I, I, anyway, don't get me started there. Don't ask. Let's meet for coffee. I'll slap you in the face if I hear that one more time because they don't want to meet you for coffee, especially after COVID. We need to automate this stuff so that it will go out in a way that will make sense. So I normally will automate that text, the email. The other things I automate is all done pretty much in a drip campaign. Mm -hmm. And that is adding the source. Where did this lead come from? Adding the status. At that point, when it comes in, it's a brand new lead. Adding the... um, uh, tags if I feel like I need. I'll put a tag in my drip campaign that tells me which drip campaign they're on so that I can run a search. Tagging is really f- for quick identif- di- identification of what's going on with that lead, yeah. but also to help you run a search in your CRM yep. for things. And huge. if you tag correctly without overdoing it, my, my issue is people don't use their fields and their statuses they use their tags for everything and then it's a jumbled mess, yeah. right? But adding all of these things, uh, automate a notice to yourself that somebody just signed up, that you got either an email or a text, right? Automate as much of that, add a note to the system, right? If your drip campaign can allow you to do that, mine does. By the way, I have my own CRM, but I help in others. Mine is Engage More CRM. But I help in other in everyone else's, and I've been in every other CRM out there. They don't all do everything, yes. But 
as much as that thing can do, some will automatically turn on a, like Chime does this, where it will automatically turn on a, a subscription. If you knew that lead was coming in off a certain ad, why not turn on a, you know, listing, you know, listing notification subscription for them automatically? Because you knew they're all coming in from that one ad that you made. Yeah. So why not have that built right in if you can do that, right? Because you've got a website that goes with it. So as far as the automation goes, that the two, two big, big things is getting those integrations that they come straight in and automating it directly into a drip campaign to turn on. You shouldn't be looking at that lead when it comes in and go, oh, they should get this lead or they should get this campaign unless you're manually adding them. But you want my opinion? If you're standing in the grocery store, you guys, and somebody, you meet somebody, Instead of, right, oh, let me get my information and let her write it down, or you don't have your phone, you don't have any, you're writing it on the, you know, back of your, you know, checkbook or whatever. Instead of doing that, how great would it be if you had your own landing page ready in here that you just filled out and it automatically added and immediately sent them something, got them into the system. So you know how you're all making landing pages for everybody else? Make it for yourself, you know? (laughs) <laughs> because it's so easy that you could just fill it out and automatically, if you don't have any other technology, and there's plenty of that, because I could even say, give me your email, text me your email, it'll add to my account automatically. There's different ways to do it through text. Uh, there's like text to join. Uh, there's, you know, there's different ways that you can do that. So is that imperative? No, I think the two most imperative things you need is to have well land okay let's say landing pages I, ideally you need a squeeze page option whether it's in your crm or it's a third party now the problem sometimes with some of our crms and mine included that not every lead source will automatically go in without help and you right. might need zapier right yep. um, some third party tool to help that right automation but that i have i had, go type in patty sampson zapier i did a whole training on youtube about right. that so um, realistically, those are the three most important things I would say is getting that drip campaign running. And that campaign should be loaded full of everything you could possibly do that you want to have it to have it do. And what that is, is really dependent on what your CRM will do. Right. Yeah. So mine does just about everything all the way to the end. And I love it because mine will actually turn a campaign on again. Mm. It'll restart it at the nice. end of it. That, if I choose. that was going to be my next question is how long are you setting up campaigns yeah. for and how often are you renewing? Because I find, again, a, a lot of agents don't think long term and they're, they're thinking no. short term and they're setting up and they go, OK, I got a couple months of stuff and then months yeah, over and they no. don't have anything for them. So what's your and then it's uh, over horizon? and you don't even know that it's over. Exactly. So I, that's why you talk about the 10 day of pain. It drives me nuts because 10 days, then you've got it. What am I going to do after 10 days? You've got to physically be in there. If you want to add 10 days of pain, which for those of you who don't know what that is, just a lot of communication for the first 10 days, yeah. you, you, can, you can do it, but put it at the beginning of at least a year long campaign, yeah. if not longer. It should be no less than a year long. Um, my campaigns, actually, this is what I do. I, I have a campaign that probably ha- it has an entire year where I will go pretty heavy the first month and then it starts to lighten up. I might the, the next two, three months will go once a week. And then this is just the nurturing part, by the way. This isn't the other stuff I'm going to tell you about. But the nurturing part will be once a week for the next couple of months. And then it might go every other other. But you have to keep in mind, like they're not coming on and buying teeth whitening kits, you guys. So this is a big, huge investment. So two weeks of a campaign is not long enough. And by the way, if somebody said somebody says that lead sucks because they never got back to me, well, you didn't catch them at the right time. You can't assume anything about these leads, you know, until they tell you to stop. They're a good lead for yep. you. So yep. you need to keep it running. So mine will actually give me a notice when it's over. So I have a, all these reminders that come in when the campaign ends so that I can go in and decide what do I want to do next. So after a year, right now, at the same time, I have a nurturing campaign, which is checking in occasionally and educating about my area giving them information that's going to be helpful to them. Yeah. And we could talk about that content here in a second, but at, at the same time that's running, I'm making sure they're getting property listings or market updates. So depending if it's a buyer or seller, right? If you know they're a buyer, 
you probably know how you got it. If it if you bought a if you bought a zip code or you're paying for leads on Facebook, the, they should be getting listings from you. And if you don't have a site that can set that up, you might like my system will automatically send the same template out, just like the MLS. But right. I'm driving them over to my website, yeah. and guess what I'm getting as a result? Search engine optimization on my website. Yeah. So all the money I'm spending on lead generation, uh, it's turning into organic business for me because even though I may not do business with these, by the way, you'll be lucky if you close three of those, three to five of those hundred that you get. Yeah. That's just the way it is on the internet. But um, the rest of them are still going to hit on my emails and they're still going to click and look at the properties I'm sending them. And they're going straight to my website where I built a page, right? That is specific to that ad. Yeah. or whatever it is. So you've got a page you've created and you're just saying it's all automated. Once it yeah. comes in, two campaigns turn on. I don't touch anything. Now, sure, you should pick up the phone and call them. <laughs> now, that's a whole nother thing because yeah. I know there's coaches out there saying don't call. I personally think it's a mistake, but yeah. at the minimum, you're sending them a text, but you really, they give you a number. How do you know they're not sitting there waiting to hear from you? I mean, if you can't do it, hire somebody to do it. You know, yeah. it's just, hey, how can I help you? Exactly. So, but a year long at least, but I would never stop it because at that point I'm turning on some sort of other re-engagement campaign. Are you the one I'm talking about? Are you still alive? Yep. Uh, do you want something from me? I have something to offer you. Tell me, are you still looking? Yep. It's that, you know, to find out if they're still alive and worst case scenario, you've got them on a holiday campaign and, or uh, if you do newsletters, I would only do it if I was really focused on stuff that was going on in my world and not just getting some crap from some company that doesn't have anything to do with Scottsdale, Arizona. You know, I wouldn't do that um, if you're going to get into it or any videos you're creating, throw those in there and send them out once a month. I mean, we could be here for days talking about content, but you know. So uh, speaking specifically to campaigns and how many campaigns would you suggest agents have? And just give us the kind of the oh quick, well, how, how CRM, bare bones ones. I'm going to give you just an overview. My CRM has over 30 in them, but um, I have campaigns for new buyers, new sellers, right? Old stale buyers, old stale sellers. And those are long, you know, they're still long. They're just not sending as heavy and I'm educating. I'm waiting for them to respond, right? I have campaigns for rentals, uh, for probate leads, uh, really depending on what your business is. So you have to think that over. Yeah. What is it? Most of us need the standard buyer and seller campaigns, right? New yeah. and old. So anybody who's closed, I always get, oh, what do you do? Well, it depends. Are they a closed buyer or a closed seller? Because I'm going to treat them differently. Exactly. What am I going to send to a closed buyer that's different than a closed seller? Well, frankly, I'm going to treat them different, but not really. Because how many, I don't know how many times you've moved, but I've moved a few. I still love seeing what's going on in my old neighborhood, yeah. right? So I'm going to send them, updates on what's going on in their community instead of sending it every few days i will do it once a month yep. and so you're gonna you could set that up to happen automatically either from your mls or from ideally to your website because you can, most of our sites we can go in there and run a search for that area right and you could put every act, bit of activity that's going on all the actives all the solds yep. and just send it out automatic set it up to go out once a month on those closed clients right but I also would turn them on a holiday campaign or a sphere campaign, which I send out one thing a month. I just finished my two year sphere campaign, by the way. Um, in fact, I'm going to give everyone who's watching this a free if they want it free. I'll tell you how to get it. Um, and so two years worth is one thing a month. And it checks in twice a year with a text just to see if they need anything or yep. they have any referrals because you got to remember to ask for that. But other things that I have honestly, is I created what I call the left message campaigns. And I have three, I actually have six total ones. And what they do is I'll, after I get off a call, trying to call somebody, if I leave a message, I'm going to follow up with a text and an email. That's all the campaign is. It's mm -hmm. a text and an email, but I had six of them. One, three for buyers, three for sellers. And so instead of having to go in and type up a text or on my phone, oh, I just left you. No, I just turn on a campaign and it automatically will send a text and an email saying, I just left you a message. This is, you always have to introduce yourself because yep. they don't always know you, right? <laughs> yeah. Tell them who you are. Maybe at the beginning, you always have to make sure you tell them how you got their info too. 
Um, and also give them an option to opt out. I hate to say it, you guys, but the laws are coming down heavy, heavy, heavy for this stuff. Texting why is yeah. emails bad? Texting's work. Make sure that you do this stuff because if you don't, you'll be in trouble. But so I have campaigns that I will just automatically do that, right? And so I'm not having to manually do it. And then it adds a note to my system that'll say I left a message. So now I can go in the next time and say, I need everyone who has that note or the flag that said left message one, I can find all those folks so that I can go leave message two, right? Yeah. So um, that, uh, God, I when I got Sphere, can't, I think I told you Sphere holiday, I got five years of holiday with all video. Nice. Uh, and I've got a new that that's new and running out. Well, my five years rolling out right now for anybody who wants to get it. But um, there, so I just think anything you could do to stay in front of these folks, but it's all nurturing until you actually talk to them yeah. and uh, they should be getting listings from you at the same time. And because that's what they care about right now. Yep. Right. The, the listing, the market updates, if you know what it's subdivision or whatever it was, however it was, you got them as a seller. There's nothing stopping you from sending them updates on the market on what's going on so that they've got that. Even if you don't have their address, you probably have a good idea about where they're from. Yep. And if, if you don't, then it could be some, I'm in the Phoenix metro area. I mean, I could just do a general metro area update and send it weekly. Send it weekly for, for leads you haven't spoken to yet because you just don't know when you're going to catch them, right? Yeah. Where, where they're at in that process. So. And that's that's the key with all of this is that you don't know where they're at and you don't know when you're going to catch them and what's going to change. And I've seen in my own right. business where people say, this is my plan. And then something happens, their husband passes yeah. away, their kid goes to school, they get a, a job yeah. transfer. And if you don't have systems following up with them over that time, even if they say, yeah, we're not moving for five years. So you don't, you put them in the back burner. It's like, if you don't have a good system, you're missing out on that potential and right. you're going to kick uh, yourself uh, my, because you could have got it. Right. I can tell you that by the end of the listings that are going out every three days and um, at least for a buyer and my, in, my nurturing campaign, they're getting hit 285 times, about 285 times wow. a year. You're sitting here saying, well, it sounds <laughs> like a lot, but it's really not because the, the majority of it is listings and they yeah. care about that. They're not yeah. going to opt out of that. Right. So in those listings, they're getting an email that says, if this isn't what you want, let me know. And there's two buttons at the bottom of my emails. One is look at these listings. And the other one is schedule a meeting with me, you know, yeah. so they have an option there to, and that, that second button will actually write me correct straight back when they click that button. Mm. So again, it's about setup. You got to get it set up. And before you start running ads and before yes. you start spending money yeah. at, you know, you could have, uh, if you said open houses all the time, you've got a standard open house campaign, right? You're going to turn that on next week. You'll change the very first email out because guess what? After that, that email goes, the rest of it's the same. Yeah. <laughs> Just make sure you've got the other, you know, you're sending listings yeah. that are similar to the area where that open house is. If you have all that set up before you walk in the door and maybe you go in a few minutes early, record yourself with your phone. If you can send a video and say, it was great to meet you at the open house and make this your first text that goes out. Make sure you tell them what the address was mm. too, because they might've seen a few mm -hmm. and say, uh, do you have any interest in it? It does not need to be specific to that person, but yeah. it sure can look like it because yeah. you're saying, Hey, it's Patty from the open house at one, two, three main street. Yeah, that's great. And, uh, now you're asking them to get back to you, right? They're going to look at this, right? Because yeah. they're open, uh, you know, what is it? 97% of people will look at their text. Doesn't mean they're going to respond, but yeah. better than the, the average people who look at your emails. Yeah, exactly. You, you mentioned something about your open rates, which is amazing. If you average open rates, less than 20% right now, it's kind of deceiving a little bit with the iOS updates and stuff, but yeah. it, if you can get mine are all 50 to 60 and you've got to, it is, it's your subject line. It just yep. boils down to that, yep. you know? So um, there's, there's just that there's, there's that, but then calls to action always help too. Yeah. <laughs> and sign the letter. So I want to ask about the conversions too, because I think again, if you are newer to internet, internet leads, and if you haven't really done anything like this, I think some people are blown away 
yeah. one way or the other of how much it leads. Cause I've seen a lot of agents generate leads like I've got 10 leads this month. And then the reality sets in of how many it takes. So can you just kind of yeah. quickly walk us through what the expectation should be and what that's going to look like for agents? Well, if you're doing internet leads, again, internet leads mean a lot of things. If you're, if you're uh, somebody who's buying at doing ads, like on Facebook, um, Keep in mind, they're sitting on the toilet, right? And they're scrolling and they, oh yeah, I like that house. They click on it, they sign up. They want to see how much it's worth, right? What kind of lead is that compared to somebody who's coming in off of YouTube, who's searching for your neck of the woods yeah. and you've put a landing page out there that says, get my list. Yeah. So that, re, that is, I couldn't tell you, I, I'm going to, I couldn't tell you exactly what that conversion is for a YouTube lead because Again, it all comes down to your follow up because you still got to follow up, yeah. right? You still need to get these people into your system. Well, most of the people on YouTube are going to ask a question and just type it in the comments. And if you're ignoring your comments, I can't help you. You know, yeah. ideally, you always want to have some way to automate it so you can get the information. And so to me, the YouTube lead's going to be better because they're purposely out there looking for that. Also, a Google pay per click ad is going to yeah. be better than a standard, oh, I scrolled through my feed and saw yeah. this. On gen in general, though, if you're doing like Facebook ads, you might close three to five percent of those. Five is really, really good. Yeah. And so you're going, well, why would I even bother with this? Because you spent thirty dollars on the ad and you got a lot of leads. It's a yeah. numbers game, right? Yep. So the more leads, but again, you can't just turn on a two week campaign and <laughs> exactly. expect to get these people to call you right back because they're not going to do that. Exactly. It's really going to be up to you to uh to stay on top of them right so uh on i would say i would love to say that if you got 10 if you got 100 leads on youtube that you should be able to close 50 of those so, i mean i want to say that but i know a lot of people get excited and they'll sign up for stuff but if you did this right you probably could do way better than a standard three to five percent on a you know regular internet lead it's a lot different, I think, now than it ever used to be because everybody's doing it. Yeah. And before, almost no one was, right? And so you've got a huge, how are you going to stand out? That's exactly, it's, it's out doing it even more and you got to be more intentional with it and exactly. more segmented and more personal. Like you and, said and earlier really about the guy who was, oh yeah, the guy likes beer. I want to make sure he's getting that, right? Yeah. Um, the more you can personalize without necessarily doing it manually, the better off you'll be. <laughs> you really yeah. will, you know? Yeah. It's, it, 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 it can be challenging, but I think your goal is to know what you're putting out in the world because if you put a post out, that got a lot of action off that post, that post tells you something. And if somebody's responding, that's when you put that flag and you start segmenting. Right. If those people are responding to that, all of a sudden now, what can I do to respond to that? Well, I might say, oh, hey, there's a balloon, you know, there's a balloon event here in Scottsdale on October 30th. And I had a lot of people like it. Well, what if I said, I'm going to figure out a way to get them some free tickets and I have a landing page I create for everyone who commented on it. Yeah. I don't have to do it for everybody, but I mean, you know, that's like the people that go out and buy those leads. Uh, they get the leads for the houses that might be available that for sale, if someone might want a list for sale. And now they're putting together all of this, these packages and they're spending an arm and a leg to put them in the mail. I personally think that's a mistake. I think you ought to really make sure these people are interested by giving them some other reason to sign up for something else. Yes, exactly. And if you can do that, now they're showing interest and now it makes sense for you to yeah. go to their house and drop yeah. this stuff off or spend the money on the yeah. expensive listing packages instead of every single piece of crap lead that you get, the time it takes and you know you're not going to close them all. I mean, you, you just, you need to offer up something else to show show you that they have more interest in this, yep. right? Which is why you need more of those emails to test out and like you said, the, the call to action so that you see who's responding to what, right. what they're responding to. And then you can kind of work I, through but that. But I think the key is that people look at it like, oh my God, there's just so much work involved. No, it, if you get your standard campaigns done, it's not as hard as you think because you clone the campaign, you just replace out the letters at the beginning yep. because in the end, they're all buyers and sellers to you, exactly. right? And and, and then that, that recurring campaign that goes out with the listings is more specific to them. So they care about that. Yeah. You're driving people over to your site to look at, and if you're doing videos, 
make sure those videos are in these emails if you can, um, if they're generic enough to not be specific about one thing, yep. if you do that, then make sure that's part of your campaign. But repurpose everything you're doing if you can, yeah. especially if you're doing video work, which everyone should be doing now. I mean, you and I right now are talking to each other as a result of a video I watched of yours and you found out about me through my stuff. Yeah. So I, I it, video is just, I, I, anyone who's not doing it is just losing a yeah. massive opportunity. <laughs> exactly. It just are. Um, and it doesn't matter what business you're in. You just should be doing it. But yeah, uh, it works. So, yeah. Right, well, we always wrap up with a best piece of advice. So if you were giving some advice to people who are agents who are kind of either dipping their toes into the, the water of, of using CRMs and in, in, right. in, in campaigns, or they're kind of trying to take the next level, what advice would you give them? Well, I saw something yesterday is that I'm the new agent getting into this business. I don't care if you're new or not new, but like to get back to it, you, your goal before you do any more <laughs> lead generation is to get yourself set up. And the excuse that you're too busy is going to lose you business because yeah. you just have to plan to spend time, number one, learning your CRM, right? So it's one thing to have it. It's another to know how to use it. And I'll tell you something, you hire somebody to help you and you don't know how to do it. How do you know they're doing it right? So yeah. it, it's worth taking the time to learn it at least well enough to know what you need to watch for in the event you're losing business or you're not yeah. selling. If you were, if you're selling a lot, great. So you're learning it and make sure that you get your campaign set up before you start doing all of these things, because it's money that is being wasted. Otherwise yeah. you're losing opportunities to close sales because they're losing track of you and you're losing track of them. And when I hear that lead company sucks, 90% <laughs> of my brain goes, that's not the, what sucks. It's your follow-up. Yeah, it's hundred percent. And then my, my last tip is this, there is no money in lead generation. The money is in the follow-up. Yeah. <laughs> and on that note, you want to get my book, <laughs> which is Drip Campaign Secrets. Um, if you go to dripcampaignsecrets.com, it'll take you to the link to get you to um, the, the book. It's on Amazon. But um, I, if you go through, you can see just some other a video that I put in there and all that. So dripcampaignsecrets.com. The other thing if you just want drip campaigns, I have uh, realestatedripmail.com, which you can go to and um, check out. I'm actually changing up and putting in some more uh, campaign packages in there. But by the time you see this, it might be done. If not, you can just check out what I have there because there's opportunities for you to get the campaigns that I've used in my own top producing career. And I'm still using them and constantly upgrading those. And they will always remain as upgraded as I can. If you're looking for a new CRM, engage more CRM. <laughs> and if you want free stuff, go to exposedagent.com. Maybe we can put all these in the link and uh, the video. You know, I can give you all yep. those links. We'll put them in the, in the show notes. You literally just there. took care of the whole thing. I usually ask the next book and then how people can get a hold of you. So yeah, you oh, my next one book shot, so is awesome. actually going to be the templates. They will only be in the book version, but I've got some templates and my third book is going to be the life cycle of a lead magnet. So nice. this, all this stuff I'm telling you about in, in much more detail. The challenge I have is that I train and coach in every CRM out there when you ask me to. So it doesn't matter what CRM you're in. We can build them for you. I can yep. help you with all that. And you can check all that out at exposedagent.com. Um, but um, the challenge I have is that, you know, if, if you, if you just got to get it set up, but I can't train on all of them in a book, it just makes yeah. it hard. So yeah. I can give you the general idea and then go to YouTube too. Cause I got videos out there and some of the CRMs, um, out there, but my campaigns are set up to be used in the majority of our popular CRMs. So you're going to get them. Remember the merged fields I was talking about. Yeah you get them specifically for those CRMs oh, and great. the majority of the top ones that everybody's using out there. That's so, great. or you can come to engage more and get over 30 of them built already pre-built with landing pages, but I don't care what CRM you use, just yep. use one and learn it. That's, <laughs> so, that's the best advice there the whole day. Honestly, it, yeah, I mean, it, you can pay for exactly. it. You can sit there and say it doesn't work, but it's like, if you don't use it, if you don't get in there and I, I've, again, I've coached and trained a lot of agents and they all get to that point and they get stalled out and it's like, 
you're not using it. If, if, if yeah, I saw you using it, you could thing because many of them want to use their company CRMs, which I do caution against. I, you know, because I just, you'll, you might lose everything you have, yeah. all the energy you put into, you know, it's, it's, I, I caution against it, but I understand it. You know, I understand why you're using it, but I think at the time, if you can't afford to get your own, you just, you run a risk, but be careful and yep. eventually get out of it if you can, because yep. you really should be able to just put your logo on your website and your CRM and take everything with you wherever you go. And then you don't risk it. And guess what you get at the end? Something that you can sell when you're done and you're fried, you know, because eventually that's going to happen. And then you won't have anything, you know, sell it to the next person that, or, you know, work out a deal where you got referral business for the rest of your days. So, and you can't do that off an Excel spreadsheet. Sorry, it's going to be too hard. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Or right. your notebook that you end up losing, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Well, yeah. Patty, I really appreciate you being on the show and sharing your insights you. and wisdom with our audience. And I know that if they take a, even a fraction of what you teach and apply that to their business, they will start to see successes. So thank you for sharing your wisdom and experience. And I know so I, I can feel a passion in it and I know ah, really I love your stuff. I, loved, I like who talks about this stuff. It's the yeah. least sexiest thing in our business, but yeah. I love it. Awesome. <laughs> so I appreciate thank it. you so much, Ryan, for having me. I appreciate awesome. it so thank much. You. Thanks for checking out today's episode. If you'd like more videos like this, be sure to sub like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Facebook page and our other social media channels. Looking forward to bringing you more great content like this and happy farming.